The last thing I want to go over in this chapter is something that hopefully won't be too much of a concern, but it's something I want you to be aware of just in case something comes up, in case something breaks. If you go on Stack Overflow or something and it talks about file permissions, I want you to understand what those are, how to find them, and how to read them. So we're here in our present working directory, right where it drops us when we log into the server or home slash username folder. And if you do an ls, it shows you the folders that we made when we learned how to navigate around the file system a little bit. And this is going to be a folder that we use to learn how to use text editors in a following video. But if we do an ls-l, it stands for long. It's a tag you can append onto the ls command. So instead of showing everything, we want to show everything in a long format. It gives us the same thing. I want to go right to left here. It gives us the name of what we're looking at, whether it be a folder or a document. It gives us a date of the last time it was modified. It gives us both the owner of that file and the group that owns that file. It gives us the mode as well. So now going left to right, this D just tells us it's a directory, tells us this navigate object is a folder. And from left to right, we have three groups of permissions here. This first set of three um, is for the owner of the file. This next set is for the group that owns the file, being this group. And this last row of three is for everyone else on the server that interacts with this file. And what these letters stands for is read, write, and execute. So read just means you have permission to look at the file. You don't have access to write to it. Um, writing means you have access to write to the file. You can change it. X means execute, which means if it is an executable file, you have permission to execute that file. So really what this means is that just a very shorthand way of knowing who has what kind of access to what. So what this is telling us is that the both owner and the group that owns the file, the individual owner and the group owner, because you can have a group like the wheel that we added ourselves to that encompasses all of the group users. A uh, wheel would be an example of a group. So everybody in that wheel group, if this were owned by wheel, would have these permissions on this file. They both have access to read, write, and execute. Whereas everybody else who's coming, if it's a different user who I haven't explicitly added to that group, um, they only have access to read it and execute it. They can't change it at all. They can see what's in there. They can run it since it's something I built and I'm giving them permission to do, but they don't have access to change anything. Now we can change this using a command called chmod, which is gonna need a sudo in front of it if it's anything outside of your personal home directory. So we're just gonna write sudo chmod and we're going to use numbers to signify what we want to happen. So we know each set of these three permissions is for a different group, whether it be a individual owner, the group that owns it, or the group of all the rest of the users. And what we do is just add up the number of values we associate with these different letters. So an execute is always going to be a 1, a write is always going to be a 2, and a read is always going to be a 4. And the reason that's a four is because if we wanted just read and it was a three, that would be a three. But if we wanted just writing and executing, that would be a three if we added those two together. But in a three can't mean two separate things. A three can mean a read, but a three could also mean just writing and executing. So they made it a four. So you can add one, two, and four and never get those numbers add up to be any other number in that group of three. So since this has read, writing, and execute, for the owner, it's going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6, plus 1, which is 7. So pseudo chmod 7. And that other uh, owner group is also read, write, execute. So that's 4 plus 2 plus 1 is another 7. And this reading is a 4, and this x is a 1. And this dash means we're not going to have that. Uh, this doesn't have the writing permission for the every other user. So this is just a 4 plus a 1 is a 5. So that is how we get this group of permissions here. If we wanted to change that, say make this also have the uh, writing capability, we just change that to a seven, and then we just need to tell it what we want to make those changes on. So we want to tell it we want to change the mode to 777 on navigate. 
So if we do another ls-l, we'll see now that it says pull permissions across the board. Uh, the owner, the owning group, and everybody else can read, write, and execute this file. And if you want to change it back, it's just sudo chmod 775. Again, we want to tell it to have that on navigate. And another ls-l tells us that it's gone back to normal. So like I said at the beginning of this video, um, if you follow along to everything I tell you, you're likely not going to need to touch any of this, which is totally, totally fine. I just want you to be aware that these permissions and these owners are here. It's something that is attached to every folder and file on your system. If anything were to come up, if you were to find anything in a thread telling you the need to change permissions on something, uh, be a little wary of it. It might be someone giving you bad advice, but it could be a jumpstart into figuring out what your problem is, and now you have the tools to be able to go and actually change those permissions. In addition to that, I'm going to add a couple of links at the bottom of this document just so you can learn a little bit more about how this works. Again, please don't get bogged down in it. It's not super duper important right off the bat, but it is important to know that these things are here and in the future to understand how they work.